So, I bought some new instruments and ran out of 10 MHz frequency references, as one does. Fortunately, BG7TBL to the rescue, with distribution amplifiers ready to rectify the situation. Unfortunately, this unit has a problem. Now, this is actually my second. Last one had a problem too, but it was a sort of short uh, ceramic cap, and it happened during the great capacitor shortage. So, uh, water under the bridge, didn't think too much of it. This one, however, uh, it has a design problem and now we're zero for two so that's not great uh, I wanted to make a video about it to help people who might have the problem uh, who might have the problem and not know about it uh, and also to help people who are shopping in any case on to the interesting part there's the problem that's supposed to be a nice clean 10 megahertz output but instead it has all sorts of nasty side tones so where do the side tones come from well, the first thing we always have to check uh, is that the module we think is the culprit is actually the culprit. So we, first we look to the inputs. We've got a 12 volt power input, we've got a 10 megahertz uh, reference input, and we feed those from a nice clean lab power supply and a nice clean lab signal generator just to make sure that we know those aren't the culprits. And indeed, giving it nice clean inputs uh, does not resolve the problem. So the module we thought was at fault is indeed at fault. The next thing we check is, is we see symmetric uh, side tones here, and, and that strongly suggests that uh, we've, got, we've got some kind of modulation going on. Uh, the fir first thing we're going to check is for amplitude modulation, and that idea is we're, here we're looking at a 10 kilohertz window uh, around 10 megahertz. But if that's generated by modulation, we expect to see a DC, a spectrum that looks something like that. So we're, we're looking for that spectrum, but repeated at, at DC. And we've got the green spectrum here uh, with the same, the same 10 kilohertz span, uh, but now the left side is bumped up against DC instead of the center being fixed at 10 megahertz. And we're going to take the scope probe corresponding to that bottom spectrum there. We're going to go around and we're going to poke different nodes of the circuit. And we're going to see if we can find the culprit. And here we're, we're just poking the, uh, the power input to the system and we already see something. But if we go a couple nodes, nodes deeper, uh, we see that the amplitude of the signal increases. And so if the, the signal is getting, the, getting louder, the spurious signal is getting louder as we get further into the module here, well, that, uh, uh, that means we're, we're on its track. And, and if we poke around more and more nodes, we eventually find the culprit, which is this little amplifier here. Yeah, look at that. Yikes. So. This immediately, once we look at the footprint of the circuit here, we can immediately figure out what's the problem. So these modules uh, come in a couple different versions. Uh, some of them are just buffer amplifiers like this one. Some of them have an internal crystal reference, and you can see there are several different footprints uh, to accommodate several different crystal references. But here, since this is just a buffer, uh, we don't have any internal reference. We only have an external reference. But the internal reference amplifier is still present. And uh, as, as you might know, if you, have, uh, if you do amplifiers wrong, they can quickly become oscillators. And removing the input to an amplifier uh, that, that still has tons of gain is, uh, is definitely one of those ways that you can, you can turn an amplifier into an unintended oscillator. And that's what's happening here. And that unintended uh, 10 kilohertz oscillation is getting fed uh, right into the output of this buffer. So uh, the way to fix that problem, well, well one, one thing you might try is decoupling the signal path here. Uh, but actually, that doesn't resolve the problem. I, I suspect that's, that's because the coupling, the signal path is good isolation. The coupling is happening uh, either through power or through adjacent traces or something. Uh, but this, the strategy to get rid of that is, well, we know that the active component is, is a very important part of, of having an oscillator. You can't have an oscillator without, without energy input. So we can just remove the power uh, to this unneeded uh, internal amplifier um, comparator, and that will just completely get rid of the oscillation and, uh, and clean up the output. Well, can we do this on video, bodging out L1? Yeah. Moment of truth. There we go. Nice and clean. Well, well, mostly nice and clean. We've still got some side tones. Going to have to track those down and see if those are actually meaningful or not. Uh, but still, the main problem has been resolved. Nice.